Howdy folks, Spencer here, and today I want to talk about the Sagging Command Cruiser, or the Stargazer, from Season 2 of Star Trek Picard. This is a new promotional ship that we are going to be getting, so being a promo ship, that does mean it is obtained through either R&D or Duty Officer promotional packs, and you will also be able to acquire it off the exchange for somewhere around 1.5 billion EC. Um, it may also go through private trade channels initially for a couple hundred mil higher than that. I've seen quite a few of the recent promo ships initially go only sell in private trade channels for like 1.6 to 1.8 billion. So expect this to be another very expensive ship, but a few will end up on the exchange for 1.5 bill or lower if you're patient and just keep an eye on the exchange. So uh, let's start off with the, the layout of the ship. We've got a 4-4 ship, and this is a command cruiser, as the, the name implies. I'll go over the bridge officer seating here in a few. 4-4 four, four is not for everyone. Uh, there's really two types of builds that benefit from 4-4, four, four, and that is tanking or torpedo boats. And I will tell you, when we get to the bridge officer seating, that's what this ship is for. You're you're not getting this to do a beam overload build. Uh, you're not getting this to do CSV. I don't think it can even equip. It shouldn't be able to equip dual heavy cannons anyways, but uh, you know, th this is a really a ship that is focused on tanking or torps. And the console we have with it is the harmonic shield barrier. This gives you plus 50.5 to starship shield regen and shield hardness. Uh, neither of those are, I mean, th those are good values. I just don't think most people are going to care about that. Now, the clicky of this console is a bit of a troll. This will summon a shield right in front of you that will be like a, it'll be like one of the old cover shields for those of you that were around when those were really problematic. Um, it is putting up a big shield in front of you, and if there's more allies around you, it will grow the shield to, to be even larger. This shield will taunt all foes in front of it, and you can't shoot through it. <laughs> Neither can the enemies. So if we go and look at the demonstration that was done on stream. So Hale is about to hit the console here, and you will see that it puts up this big blue shield right in front of him. When he does that, the enemies cannot shoot him and he can't shoot them until they go on the, uh, the side of the shield. So the, this is also very likely to end up being a troll console because this will just straight up lock people from moving through it. It'll also block enemies from going through it. Uh, so just imagine if someone hits this console in a map where your team has to go through a small area, uh, let's say one of the competitive space TFOs, if they hit it while the rest of the team is around them, you know, the size of this could expand to, to fill up quite a bit of that doorway to get to the next point. I don't think it would fully, yeah, it would not fully lock it but you know it would at least cause some issues and maybe cause a few of the team to run into it as they're trying to get through uh so there's very much multiple ways that this console is going to be used for trolling unfortunately i'm not a fan of it um i don't expect anyone to really use the console for any practical purposes i just see it as being a troll console at the end of the day so that's the console. Now the trait is reverberant shielding. And this is the trait I was hinting to last week in the, the video, the QA video, where I said uh, there was a trait coming out that would have fit in really well during the feedback pulse meta. So this trait, whenever you hit feedback pulse, it will grant you a, a reverse shield polarity of the same rank as your feedback pulse. So if you hit feedback pulse three, you're getting a reverse shield polarity three. Likewise, if you hit reverse shield polarity three, you're going to get a feedback pulse three. So it, it's a 
an interesting interaction between feedback pulse and reverse shield polarity. And there are potentially some situations where maybe this would become useful. Um, you know, I could see this on some really niche tank build being a thing that people may build around. And the reason for that is when you are getting the, like the reverse shield polarity, if you hit your feedback pulse and you get the reverse shield polarity, these abilities are separate from the ones that you have on the ship. So if you already have a reverse shield polarity three, but you're, you're timing your feedback pulse to, to activate the feedback pulse once your reverse shield polarity three falls off so that you get another reverse shield polarity, uh, from hitting the feedback pulse. Like I could see it being used in that type of situation to give you reverse shield polarity for a longer duration. But the issue is feedback pulse sucks right now. It, it has sucked ever since they nerfed it back in, what was it like season 13? Like they butchered it like five or six years ago. I think it was, they, they absolutely hated that feedback pulse was doing really good. And they basically just made it so bad that slotting it was just lowering your damage potential. And, you know, reverse shield polarity has never been the same since the, the nerfs it hit. So I, I really, like, I, I see the very niche use cases for this trait, but it's not one that I could just generally recommend for, for tanking, especially given the cost, of course. So it's interesting, but you know, I, I, maybe some of you will disagree. I just don't see many people actually getting it and using it, especially given that you have to use a feedback pulse to, to you, you know, to, to make the trait work. So interesting. Uh, but feedback pulse has been out of the, the meta for a very long time for good reasons. Now. Let's take a look at the bridge officer seating. And for this, I am going to do a side-by-side -side comparison with the sticks. We all know how much I love the sticks. I think it's the best tank in the game and it's one of the best torpedo platforms. So how does it stack up to the Stargazer? Well, they almost have the exact same bridge officer layout. In fact, they basically do. You've got a commander engineer with command on both of them. You got a Lieutenant Commander TAC, Lieutenant Psy, Ensign Universal, and then both have a Lieutenant Commander Universal as their secondary specialization seat, but they have different specializations. The Sticks has Intel, which provides it with a variety of options for DPS, tanking, or solo runs. The Stargazer has a Temporal Seat, and there's really two ways you would use this temporal seat. The, the number one way is recursive shearing. Recursive shearing one can fit right into this Lieutenant Commander slot and it'll be very effective. The other way is Uncon. Temporal has some of the best unconventional systems procs in the game. So slotting things like Heisenberg, uh, Runometric Conversion Field I think is the other really good one. You know, you could slot those and get a lot of uncon on the ship. So the temporal is really good. But, you know, if I look at my sticks build with the, the torp setup I have on it, if I were to put recursive shearing on this, this build, I would have to drop my mines down to beta one and then basically get rid of my actual attack pattern beta one. So there's trade-offs like getting that recursive will allow for a higher DPS potential for your torpedoes. But in exchange, you are losing some DPS from your mines and you are losing your own attack pattern beta on a torp boat like this. So, you know, they're very similar ships. And, you know, if I, even if I go back to the actual layouts here, they're pretty close. I mean, both are four four. The the console layouts, it's a sign tack console swapped out on the sticks, basically, or swapped around. Um, but then the sticks has a hangar pet. And not only does it have a, a hangar bay, it's got access to some of the best hangar pets in the game. The the Terran frigates here. If I 
Take this snap. There we go. That's not what I wanted. Um, these Terran frigates have attack pattern beta 3 on them, fire at will 3, and suppression barrage 3. So suppression barrage is a debuff that will lower enemy damage output. Attack pattern beta 3 is a debuff that is going to lower their damage resistance. And then with fire at will 3, what that means is that these hangar pets are applying this debuff to everything around you. So... You know, from a tanking perspective, the fact that the sticks alone has access to those pets, I, you know, it makes me lean R towards the sticks as a more capable tanking platform. And, you know, I, I, I like the Stargazer. I, I like the Sagan Command Cruiser here, but realistically, the sticks is probably going to beat it out DPS-wise, given the... I mean, the, the recursive is nice, but those mines really help at the start of a run. Um, the sticks also has that Intel seat, which Intel is just so good for solo runs. Like I've, I know I have posted a few solo runs up on the channel in the past, and I've posted like solo HSCs with the sticks. Um, but the solo ISCs, I did one on stream with the sticks and the Styx is a really capable platform, and to do those solo runs, the only way you can do those is with the two copies of Intel Team, which requires an Intel seat. And that also requires the Exodus Active Robot trait, but got a video going over all that mechanics. Um, really, what I'm trying to say is the Styx is the better ship. That the Styx is a lockbox ship that honestly is too good to be a lockbox ship. The Styx, when it came out however many years ago, should have been a promo ship. It's one of the best lockbox ships in the game. It's, I still think the Styx is the best tanking platform in the game. It's one of the best torpedo platforms. And the Sagan's going to be good in both roles, but it's not going to be as good as the Styx. So... I can't really recommend the Sagan for, for, you know, someone looking to get a tank because I think the Styx is just such a stronger option. And I can't recommend the, the, the Sagan or the Star, Stargazer here for people looking to do torpedo builds because the, the Styx, the United Earth Defense Force vessel, even the Courage, you know, are going to be more capable options than the Sagan. Um, as much as I like the ship, as much as I like the layout, you know, I'm really glad to finally have a ship that has a commander command seat and a lieutenant commander temporal. Um, you know, it's that there's trade-offs being made to get this seating and I just, I don't feel those trade-offs are worth it for, for me. I, you know, I, I like the ship. I'll get one but I'm going to get it knowing that it's not the best at, the, at either role. It, it's just going to be a really fun ship to fly. It's going to be fun to do recursive with the torps, but you know, I've already been doing that. You know, I've you guys have seen me. Uh, I think I did a stream where when I got the Cheval and you know, I, I've been really happy with that ship. And when I look at the, the torp boats with recursive, like, I'm not doing anything with mines on the Cheval, but I, I just think the, the Cheval is probably a better platform for that, too, because you're mixing in the size stuff. So, you know, I, I like the Stargazer. I think it's a good ship. I think it's cool. You know, it's there's a lot of incentive to get it for the visuals. Um, it'll make a decent tank platform. It'll make a decent torp platform. But that's about it. It's... That's what it's going to be good at. Could you do a beam overload build on this? Sure. But I I think if you're looking for like a beam overload build or some other energy weapon DPS options, you know, there's better ships for, for like beam overload like I've went over. Uh, you know, for the cost of this thing, you could get that D7 Temporal Battle Cruiser. So yeah, that that's really how I feel about this. I think it's a good ship. Just it, it's just not the best.
that's going to be it for this video. Thank you to everyone for watching. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to drop them down below. If you disagree with my, my thoughts on the ship or you agree, you know, let me know. Uh, if you're a channel member, thank you again for your support. And check out the Discord if you're not already on there. I have put in a couple uh, video ideas that I've had that I would like to get done in the next few weeks. And just would like some opinions on what you guys would like to see first over there. So if you're a member, make sure to link your account to Discord so you can see that area. And you can give me feedback on which of those topics sounds most interesting to you. But that's it for today. Thanks for watching. See you guys next time.